In this video, we're going to look at the concrete contribution to shear. When we have some kind of member, like a simply supported beam with a distributed load, uh, that distributed load is going to cause uh, shear forces and moments in the member, uh, like we have here. Um, those uh, shear forces and moments are going to cause stresses in the member. So we'll have our bending stresses and our shear stresses uh, that are caused in this section. And those stresses uh, depend on uh, the height in the section, so they vary with the height. Um, and they also vary um, along the length of the member um, and are dependent on the uh, actual moment that's applied at a specific section. So uh, the moment and shear at a specific section would give you a um, specific uh, set of stresses um, at that section. If we look at the um, stress at a specific plane in our cross section, uh, we'll have a, uh, some kind of uh, tensile stress in this case and some kind of um, shearing stress. So we can apply this stress to an infinitesimal element um, shown here. And, and here we'll have uh, some tension stress and then some um, shear stress um, in our element. Uh, we can then take this to our Mohr circle and rotate this element uh, to give us our principal stress. So our principal tension and principal compression uh, stresses um, in our element if we have no uh, shear stresses. If we take those uh, principal tension and uh, compression stresses and plot them uh, around our cross section, it'll give us our stress distribution, um, which is shown here. Uh, so at each point, we'll have some uh, principal tension and uh, compression stresses. We can use this stress distribution uh, to determine where and when our cracks will develop and uh, how much our uh, section will be able to uh, uh, resist um, our applied loads. Uh, so our cracking is always going to develop uh, perpendicular to our tensile stresses. Um, so you can see uh, here at midspan, our tensile stresses are horizontal. So our cracks will uh, develop uh, vertically. So these are flexure cracks. Uh, as we move um, away from our centroid, our tensile stresses start to curve upward. And uh, what we'll have in kind of this uh, not or, or this transition point is we'll have cracks that start as flexure cracks and then turn um, into shear cracks. So these cracks we call flexure shear cracks. Then finally, uh, if we come up more in our web, um, you can see that our um, tensile stresses start to uh, bend vertically. Um, so here we'll have a, a diagonal cracking. Um, so these cracks uh, we call web shear cracks. So before we have cracking, our concrete is going to carry our shear uh, through its tensile strength. So its tensile strength is going to carry the shear before we have cracking. After cracking, our shear will be carried by three different components. First, we have our uncracked concrete. So we'll call uh, the component the, um, that's contributed from our uncracked concrete as VC after. The next component that we have is what we call aggregate interlock. And uh, you can think of the cracking plane um, it will not be smooth. Uh, so we'll come over here and look at look at this uh, little example. So you can see that the, the cracking plane is not smooth. So if you tried to move 
um, one plane uh, in relation to the other, you'll have this roughened surface that's going to uh, resist the movement of that plane. And that's essentially what our aggregate interlock is. The final component is dowel action, uh, which we'll have at our longitudinal bar um, down in, in the bottom. Uh, so you can think of that if we have a bar that's crossing our cracking plane, if you try to move uh, one side of our con or one side of this in relation to the other, um, this bar is going to resist that uh, that movement. So we'll develop some stresses at the uh, bottom of that bar and at the top of the other bar, um, and, and that will those stresses in this bar will resist the sliding along this plane. So that'll give us our V dowel. When we're using the ACI code, um, we don't calculate um, any of these after cracking components. Um, and it's because we assume that our uh, VC after plus our V aggregate plus our V dowel is greater than um, or equal to our shear um, strength before cracking. So if we calculate our VC before cracking and our VC after plus VC or plus VAG plus VDAL is greater than it, um, then it's conservative just to use VC before for um, the life of, of the beam, whether it's cracked or uncracked.